Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hollywood Tales Podcast. This is the podcast that reveals... What's up, Jake? Jake, one of the owners, just walked in. <clears throat> uh, where we reveal a secret, dark, funny, interesting Hollywood tales. It could be with a celebrity influencer. It could be with a movie star. It could be with an athlete. It could be with a producer. It could be anything Hollywood related. This is what we talk about. But first... We like to talk about our guests that are here, and today we have one of my good friends. I've known him for almost 30 years. Marcus Redman is with us. What's up, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. This is, uh, this is cool. This is, this is very cool. I've never been here before. <laughs> it's very cool. You know, I, I should have gotten in the podcast uh, business years ago, but I thought to myself, oh, that's just for people that are 50 and washed up. <laughs> and here I am, 51, and... Watched up. <laughs> so I decided let's start a you podcast. Both, <laughs> no, no, we'll t- we'll get into what you're doing in a minute. But um, well, we record all of our podcasts right here uh, out of the Jam in the Van Studios. If you've never been, it's a really cool spot in West LA, um, <clears throat> right on Motor Avenue between uh, Pico and Venice Boulevard. It's called Jam in the Van. You can go to the website jaminthevan.com. Go to their YouTube. Uh, Jam in the Van, they basically have a tour bus that was renovated into a recording studio, and so many great artists have recorded uh, inside of that studio. So, um, And then they have live music, and they started comedy during the pandemic. Uh, their old space, they were doing comedy and, and music, and then um, they outgrew it, and they moved into this space, which I think I told you is an ex-rehab center. Right. <clears throat> which is interesting because now we're back here smoking weed and drinking. So, <laughs> There's whiskey in it. If anyone was interested. so uh, anyway, come check it out. In the meantime, let's get into you, uh, into you, man. I've known Marcus Redman two thirds of my life. We met, right. we met in acting class that our back then mutual friend Vince Vaughn. Was it? Was it acting yeah. class? Yep. Well, no. Remember Cliff Osmond? No, I remember Cliff, but I I thought we met before you started. No, no. I thought you came down to Ros- Rosmore play. If I if if I remember, maybe it was some something like that. But I remember Vince Vaughn saying, "Hey, you need to start, you know, taking acting classes." And I yeah. study with this guy named Cliff Osman, and there's some really good actors in there. And I remember auditing auditing a class, and I think that's when we met. Okay. And then maybe we met later in, at the Rosmore spot. Yeah. But uh, so we met in acting class, uh, Cliff Osman. Who this was post the uh, after school play. Correct, because that's where I met Vince yeah, right. and, and Peter Billingsley, <clears throat> and um, and and then we all sort of moved into Vince's. Yeah. Part, uh, he, Vince Vaughn had a <laughs> he had a condo on Rossmore, right there by Melrose. It was a one bedroom. It was pretty small, and um, myself, Peter Billingsley, you. I was the first guy. You were the first guy. Were you really? I thought I was. Mm-mm. Oh, you were in there before I was the me. First because I, me and Vince met in Cliff's play initially, pre after school play, and then I got the TV show. And so let's talk like, about that. Let's move in, and then he went on vacation, and I lived there actually by myself. For right. A while. By the way, big ups to Justin over here, <coughs> who's doing all of our uh, videography and sound engineering. Can you hear us all right, bud? Cheers, pal. Can I? Yeah, just bring, just bring the mic close to you. Is that, is that good? Haven't you ever done a fucking podcast, bro? Come on. Nah, this is my first. <laughs> is this it really? my first time. I've never Are you did. serious? Yeah. You've never done a podcast? No. Well, you've done interviews and stuff. I've done interviews and stuff, but they mic you. You know what I mean? Like they like there's like you, a person that like like sexually assaults you and puts stuff on you. Okay, well we're not that kind of party. <laughs> we don't do that here at Jam in the Van. We don't want to get me too on the podcast. So <clears throat> you we we all so we all end up in this acting class together. Vince Vaughn is the sort of oracle. He's the guy who always brings people together. All roads lead lead to Vince Vaughn yep. in our circle at least. Yeah. Um, and then you book. A guest starring role on the hit show at the time called Doogie Howser. Right. If you remember Doogie Howser, Neil Patrick Harris. Um, and by the way, Justin, I don't know if you are familiar, but 
Um, when Wolf does our thing, he just will take notes in case we need to put up like a photo. Is that cool? Thanks. Justin doesn't like me. <laughs> He's like, don't tell me how to do my job, right? <laughs> Fucking, I'm a pro, man. That's why I'm back here. Just do your little podcast. So all of, our, all of our nonsense gets edited out. Uh, we'll see what they keep. Wolf, <laughs> Wolf does a pretty good job. Does Wolf edit exclusively or the podcasts? Oh. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, cool. All right, didn't know that. We're new here at Jam of the Van. Um, <clears throat> here comes Joe Urell and my co-host, Blake Barty, running late. Um, so... Doogie Howser was a big show on ABC, if I remember correctly. It was one of the, it was the biggest, like nighttime television well, drama. Not, was not, not the biggest, but it was. It was. It unique. was up there. It was unique in the sense that it was like it was. It was a prime time hit with like a teenage star. Okay, so walk. So walk us through the process. Your agent calls you and says, uh, "There's a they're casting a part for Doogie Howser." Yeah. Uh, and the the part is what? And then tell us the process of how well, you book that part. Well, it actually. They had me come in um, first to play like a smaller part. Doogie was throwing a party at the house that his parents didn't know about. And there were these kids that went to school with him that were asking him what it was like to see a dead body. So I read for that first. And I grew up in Ventura County where there's no surfers. So the way I did it was like, whoa, dude. You Shut that dog up. Bodies? Hold on a second. Blake, a Blake's going to join us. Okay. Come on in, bud. See, like, this, this is, is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff it's that loose. gets edited, right? Uh, well, nonsense. yeah, we'll probably cut this out, or maybe so not. No, we won't cut Blake Barty, Marcus oh, Redman. How's it going, dude? I'm good, man. Nice to meet you. You too. I was like, but this is like the thrust is gone. No, it's good. Like no, a, just jump back into it. Thing. Marcus is in the, he's in the middle of telling us, act like you've been here for a minute. But it's weird now. Now now it's just weird. So just tell us about, go through the process. I was going to do a whole voice thing. But it got interrupted because we had dogs and stuff. Yeah. So now I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know. Bro, uh, this ain't ABC Studios, bro. This is Jam in the Van. What do you want? <laughs> so they come in. They ask me to do the thing. I do it in like a surfer guy voice, right? And so they were freaked out that I did that because it's 1990. And, and you don't look like a, yeah, <laughs> you don't look like a surfer. So, so oh, and let's just, you, you were saying you grew up in Ventura. Right. Born and raised. No. Oh. I was born in Philadelphia. That's right. And You're a Philadelphia my, boy. My folks moved out here uh, to sort of help out my grandma, and she was in Oxnard. So this was that's Ventura right. County. So right, right, right. My I grew up hanging out with surfers and whatnot, and so I did it like that, and they freaked out. And then I got called into the casting office, and they were just like, "How did you come up with that?" So then I told them what I told you guys, and they were mesmerized by it, which is weird. I guess not, because it's 1990. Anyway, then after that, they had this role of this gangster who holds Benny and Doogie hostage in the liquor store. Right. I remember that. Well, that was the guest starring was role. was the guest star. Because I didn't get the other one. It was cool that I did that, but they didn't want to hire that. So then they bring me in to be the gangster kid, and then I get that. And, and you then, rocked it because... Yeah. Because Stephen Botchko says, I like this kid. Well, that's let's the let's, funny let's part ride him into the show. The funny part is that I didn't know who Stephen Botchko was. So they built like a convenience store set that was fully operational. Mm -hmm. Like smoking machines and pinballs, whatever. So I'm standing there, and it's a closed set. And I'm playing pinball. And this dude comes in, and he's like surrounded by these women with like footboards and whatnot. And he's like, well, hello. And I'm looking at him. I don't know what dude is. This is a closed set. Nobody's supposed to be in here. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Hello. And then he's like, I don't know where they found you, but I'm glad they did. And I was like, okay, that. Thank you. This is a closed <laughs> set, so maybe you shouldn't. I had no idea it was Stephen Bochco. So he leaves. He chuckles and leaves. And then the producers come back in. They're all freaked out. They're like, Stephen came in. What did he say? What did he say? I'm like, who? Stephen? Like, I had no. It was like my very first. My second, my very second on-camera job. So I was very... What was the first? I did a, a, a play of Bully on uh, Family Magazine. I beat up Urkel. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. that. What a jerk, right? <laughs> who beat up yeah, who Urkel? beats up Urkel? I know. 
That's what they hired him <coughs> for. So you nail the role, the guest starring role, and then what happens? Botchko calls you, so your, your they, agent, and says, we want to write him as into the show. Yeah, like it was this really strange, almost immediate situation where they call back and they were like, Steven really loved what Marcus did, and we want to figure out a way to bring him onto the show you know, regularly. So I was stoked. My mother didn't believe it was real. Um, so she actually made me have Stephen Bochco call her <laughs> to tell her that I wasn't lying. Like I like like my word wasn't enough. That right? sounds like some shit my mom would do. Right? For sure. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm like, <laughs> I'm 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 making this up. She's like, well, I need to. Hey, I need to know. I need to. <laughs> So Stephen, gracious man, is there your mom Whoopi Goldberg? What was that? <laughs> at a time, <laughs> at a time she was. I yeah. need to know. I need to. Find she put that sound. <laughs> Nonsense. This is this is the stuff I'm saying is true. Anyway, uh, so Stephen graciously called my mother, and then she flirted with him on the phone, which was also super weird. What do you do? Do you tell your agent, hey, I need you to get Botchko on the phone. My mom wants no, to talk to him. This is what was so cool like about How do you organize that call? The greatest situation is that I didn't have to call anyone but Steven, and I could call Steven. You had his direct number. Personally. I, he gave me his information. Damn. Jeez. He was so cool. He was wow. like, I want you to be a part of this family. I want you to be a part of this show. Here's my office number. Call me whenever. And so I called. I called the office, and Stephen took my call, and I said, I know this is weird. And I, you know, I'm still new, right? So I don't necessarily know this is a nonsense request. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just know that my mom's on my <coughs> back, and she needs this from him. And he's just, he chuckled all the way through it. He was so good-natured. I, I rest in peace, Stephen. Stephen was That's right, amazing, he passed away. Amazing, yeah, rest in peace. Amazing man, and he started my career. And I'll always be grateful to him. He was amazing. And he called my mother, and he explained to her, apparently, because, you know, I wasn't on the line, that everything was true and everything was fine. And they had a, they had a screening for Cop Rock uh, before it aired, and he invited my mother and father down so that they could see it. He was he Cop was like, Rock? Yeah. What is that? So back in the day... <laughs> Back in the day, you just threw it out like like we're all supposed to know what. Well, I kind because everybody kind of made fun of it. So uh, he had this huge ABC deal. It was like ten shows or ten years or something. So he was like, I have all this time. I could make like ten cop shows, or I could try to do something different. So he decided to make a cop show as a musical, and it was, it was, all it right. was called Cop Rock. So he That's hires probably me. why I've never heard of it. <laughs> well, I do. It got made. It got made fun of a lot. I'm kidding. But he but he he, <clears> he had me do like a small part in that, um, that got edited out. Um, so I could totally just like talk about it without saying that I was in it. But so <clears throat> so he seals the deal with your mom, validates that you're on the show. Right. Now you're on a TV series, right? It, it was a recurring character, wasn't it? Yeah. You weren't on it every. No, I wasn't. Episode. I, but I was. I was. It was weird. I was classified as a regular, so I was in the main title yeah. credits. Yeah, you were on the front page of TV Guide. I remember that. Yeah, well, not you, but the cast. But so you, it was, it was you like, were there. There was this thing that they had, like the ten faces to watch. Right, and you were one of them. Yeah, and it, <laughs> oddly enough, I was on that same list. I with remember Will that. Smith. He was also one of the faces to watch because of Fresh Prince. Interesting. You and Will Smith have a weird. We're, yeah, we met actually. Uh, I did a film called Inkwell that uh, his his wife was in. He came down. Jada, to yeah. And did. was so he I cool with him. you, or did he? Did he, he was always cool. He didn't slap you. No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't slap me. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. He didn't slap me. <clears throat> By the way, we haven't. Uh, this is our first time uh, back doing our podcast. Blake Barty is uh, my co-host, and um, if you're just watching or chiming in halfway through. Uh, we haven't done this podcast in a few weeks. We banked a bunch of them a few weeks ago, and then Jam of the Van guys went to South by Southwest, and we got busy, went on tour, so we're back. It's nice you were our first guest back, so oh, it's, cool. refre it's refreshing. Well, yeah. Thank you for having me. This is a very cool place. So, so no, thank you. So um, so you're on the show, and here's the thing. When we, uh, we were all living together in Vince Vaughn's apartment, right. and I remember we were, like it was a big deal when you booked Doogie, Doogie Hauser. Yeah. Huge. Because now, like, one of us made it. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? Wait, like you were, we you were in this like the living quarters too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you've heard, you've like, heard Vince yeah, and Peter. Yeah. I was like this the is forgotten the guy. member. <laughs> no, it's just this story keeps coming together. It seems kind of surreal. All, From an outsider all looking cyclical. in, I'm like, mm, this, this, <laughs> someone needs to write this book or, or make this TV show happen. Like, There's if, too many good stories you coming watch, out of if this. If you watch past episodes of Hollywood Tales with Peter Billingsley and Vince Vaughn, we all were living together, so everybody has their own story about that right. condo that we all lived in. Right. And I remember when, so you, you remember you told, you know, you told us, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I booked Doogie Howser, the premiere episode's going to come out tonight. Yeah, and I remember we all sat around in the living room. I remember we all had like <laughs> popcorn. We was like a screening and we were all fucking thing. cheering for you and shit. <laughs> and it was so a good fun. feeling because a great when somebody in your circle gets a job in Hollywood, it's like, you know, anything's possible. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. well. I'm hanging around these people for a reason. If they, you know, it's not so much like if they can do it, we can do it, but it's like good for him. You know, that means I'm in the right, uh, you know, group of it's like circle of people. It's like yeah. when it gets made, we all get mm. made. We all get made. That's kind of how, <clears throat> how it was. Okay, so then let's fast forward. You ride the wave, right? You're on a hit show. <clears throat> you do the Inkwell afterwards. Yeah. I remember that movie. Mm-hmm. The, Jada Pinkett Smith. And yeah. who was the kid? Who was the, the, the guy in it? It was uh, it was Lorenz Tate. Lorenz Tate, and right? And Jada played his love. Right, and you were really you played one of the like buddies or best friends. Yeah, and it was like a kind of like a you know black rom com if you yeah. will. Yeah, but Moy had some heart to it, right? Mm-hmm. And then something happened, and I remember remember us talking about this. Something happened where Hollywood started to invite in like hip hop. Stars yeah, yeah. And, and rappers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you were losing parts to these guys. Did, did, I, did, I, skip, did I skip a beat? No, no. All right, no, so let's no. go. Oh, you were also in, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, he was also in Fight Club yeah. with Brad Pitt. You played a detective who like grilled him or interviewed him. It's like one or two well, scenes. No, well, it's, it wasn't Brad Pitt. That's actually a funny story, too. Because they right, well, told me it was Brad Pitt, but it wasn't Brad Pitt. It was Edward Norton. Okay, so, okay, uh, that's right. Well, actually, Brad Pitt, what, what was Edward Norton? Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> His alter my, ego, right? for my purposes and for the purposes of every woman that I know at oh, the time, I see, I see. they were very much interested in shaking my hand that it shook Brad Pitt's uh, hand, right. but it didn't shake Brad Pitt's hand. Yeah. Everybody was very upset with me. You had <laughs> Edward Norton grease on your hands. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so real quick. Oh, damn it. What happened? Friend of mine just passed away this morning. Oh no, oh, Jesus! Sorry. <coughs> oh my God. We'll get back to that. I literally just saw, popped up in a text message. Do you want to stop for a second? <sighs> no, I'll I'll address it. <coughs> um. Oh my God, I'm sorry, man. That's all right. Uh, where were we? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I, that literally just like shook me. Take some away. time. Yeah. Um, no, right. let's let's let, let's just get into it. Um, uh, I, God, dude, I just take lost some my time. train of thought. Take some wow. time. Can we can we like just? No, let's just keep rolling. No, let's let's just let's just keep rolling. Let me. I'll process it in a second. <clears throat> um. So you. This feels really weird. I know, I know, I know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's no, dude. Honestly, I shouldn't have brought that up. I should no, have just no, no. read just it. Take, it just was like a. Well, we. I knew it right. was going to happen. I saw it coming. We all saw it coming. I just, you know, when death comes for you, then it comes for you. So, anyhow, after Doogie Howser, <laughs> <laughs> it feels really trivial now. <laughs> Talk about Doogie Howser when you're like. How's my mic? We'll, we'll, we'll cut it. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. How's> my... <laughs> after, after, after Doogie Howser. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, if you wouldn't mind just really talking right into that. Oh, microphone. am I getting more? Okay. Yeah, put yeah, it right yeah, up under right your right chin. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> um, what was I saying? I got so, some questions so you, about so Doogie. R- real quick. Just before, so I won't lose my train of thought. You get some. We'll go back to your question. So you get some opportunities uh, to audition for like whatever X, Y, and Z role, right? And you audition, but th- what was the? There was a weird moment where you s- were like, "Fuck it, I'm not doing. I'm not gonna placate." There was a. There was a moment where you kind of walked away from the industry. There was. Uh, 
Well, I, it wasn't it wasn't that I walked away so much as it was it became very obvious that you know black actors were start me anyway starting to feel a little bit obsolete in a world where rappers were getting handed roles and deals. So you were getting bumped by rappers. Basically. It was just it was just. You know, it's a business, right? So, like, a black actor that, you know, has some good credits and some skill or whatever, that's fine. Um, but a guy like Ice Cube or Ice T or, you know, any iced beverage person <laughs> uh, who has, like, this fan base, you know, kind of like Instagram now, right? Uh -huh. There's this fan base that they're like, okay, well, if we put this guy in that role, we can say we'll put assume. butts in the seats. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. The same Salt thing tickets. goes for comedy. Comedy clubs, you right. get right. TikTokers that are famous and yeah. Ti. He's not. I don't know how his stand up is, but he can go to any comedy club. Is, Recently, bro, he's he's, he's got, going everywhere. He's getting heckle. He's he's yeah. having, he's he's actually having a hard time in the comedy world right now because well, because it's not easy. Well, he's not a comic. And he doesn't understand, like... But he's everywhere. He's at a comedy club every yeah. day. He's trying. He's but, trying. But, but I'm he's, saying, he needs like, to respect... He, he's got to respect the, uh, the craft a little bit. Or, yeah. I mean, or, or not. No, like, no, he'll go... <laughs> no, he was at the comedy store the other night. <clears throat> and, you know, there's, like, dozens of comics that perform in these shows. And he's on stage, and he's, like... A lot of comics posted it on social media he was like running the light 20 30 minutes right. I, well, I think people are bitter if you're a good comic the same thing you're a good actor and then you have someone come in because they have a following and then they're like oh yeah go on stage because you're no famous. that's fine it's fine to go on stage if you have a following but don't run the light well that too it's a, oh right 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 yeah okay. don't go why are you doing an extra 20 minutes you know there are other comics you're not you didn't do the work right. do the work and be professional and, and you know adhere to the rules right of the comedy club. When you get the light, that means wrap it up. Not in 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. It takes a minute to wrap it up. <laughs> and by the way, I've been guilty of that. I didn't wrap it up right away sometimes. Right. You know, comics are known to run the light. But right. he, but he's like doing it, you know, very inappropriately. And it's not cool. He's like, he's Will Smith and people. Is that a term? <laughs> Is that a thing? It's a, it's a verb. Is it a verb? Yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway. So yeah. No, it was... It was a, it was, it was, it was the way the business was going, at the time, um, and I just, it became, it became a bit exhausting because I enjoyed the process of auditioning, but it just sort of became very exhausting because I would end up having conversations with producers after the fact, you know, and 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 more than one was like, oh man, you know, you were great, should have hired you. It's like, okay, that's awesome thank you i can't take i should have hired you to bank of america yeah i you know so i uh <coughs> I, I i started to delve into writing at that point <coughs> so it wasn't necessarily like oh i'm walking away it was just it you're was, shifting gears well i it was i i didn't want to become something that i wasn't you know i i had actually gone on, on an audition and there was an actor there that i knew and he had shaved his head. He had like put like caps, like gold caps in his teeth. He had like altered his speech. He was a completely different guy than the guy I knew. And um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. For a specific role or just, he was doing that and rocking that role in Well, in no, general? he was, I, I saw him at an audition. <clears throat> oh, but he didn't like, that's not his everyday look. No. Okay. No, it was like a thing. He was like doing this thing. Which I understood. But why not? That's, like, that's what, look, I know. used to get flack for playing uh, terrorists right. in movies and shit from my community. Right. <clears throat> but, like, Italians don't get mad at Robert De Niro when he plays a gangster, no, at a mobster. You know, Irish people don't get mad at Jack Nicholson when he plays a mobster. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Oh, you yeah, know, I for, don't for, for me, it's... Act, but weren't, I, wasn't there a moment where you were just like, I don't want to take these roles that were being... Well, quote unquote yeah. offered to you. I mean, that was the thing. It was you didn't just, want to be stereotyped as a black. I, yeah, it wasn't. Actor. It wasn't exactly. It wasn't. Right. It wasn't what I did, and it wasn't who I was, and I didn't want to. Do, oh, I know what you're talking about. Boys in the Hood. No, no, no. It was, <laughs> it was after Boys in the Hood. Wait, I love Boys in the Hood. Let's get into they that. They offered me Boys in the Hood. 
Yeah? Yeah, because I played the gangster on Doogie, and, like, Doogie was a known show, and it was a whole thing. And then they sent me the script, and I, like, you know, no offense to anyone involved, I, I couldn't read it. it. I mean, it was so... Uh, it was so slang filled, right? That I couldn't, I I couldn't make sense of mm. it. Um, well, the movie's you know about uh, <coughs> gangsters and oh content. yeah, no no no, and that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't, I don't, I don't begrudge it. I don't, you know, it's not like yeah. I have any issue against it. It's just, it just, it wasn't for, it wasn't for me, you know. And then, and then, and then know, it went on to be kind Ice of a hit Cube, movie. Ice Cube, a rapper, do got you, that part. Do you regret it? No. no. Oh yeah, the the part of uh, Doughboy. Doughboy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I don't because it's not again, it wasn't yeah. I wasn't trying to do that. You know right. what I mean? Like I wanted I honestly I wanted to be Jamie Kennedy in Scream. Like mm. that's who I wanted to be. You know what I mean? But that guy that, that guy didn't look like me. Yeah. You know so. you know yo you can always do voiceovers. Nobody knows what you look like. <laughs> Right, you can sound like a white <laughs> surfer from Ventura, right? Yeah. What well, have I you did ever? Have voiceover. You, you should. You should consider I did a voiceover. reconsider. I did, I did a. Uh, I did a. Uh, I did a cartoon where I played the, the the hero and the villain. In in this, the Justice League, it was called. So like the hero had my voice, and then the villain had his voice. Nice. That's what I'm saying, dude. Hell you got yeah. a career. Yeah. What was your question earlier about Doogie Howser? I don't remember. <laughs> I forgot it. How old was he on, on the show? 42. No. <laughs> okay. No, Neil was, he was like just he's a couple of years younger than me, so I think Neil was 17. Like he 17. really was yeah. like a, a teenager on oh, the show yeah. then. Yeah. And was then he was, nice to work with? Neil was great. Was he yeah. doing magic back then? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Because I, I, I tripped out when I went to the uh, Magic Castle and they were talking about him. And Big thing with him. Yeah. Was the magic. And he was also, uh, he was a very talented Pratt follower. That's funny. Like, like John Ritter? Oh, dude. Like, we would all be walking in the set and then Neil would fall down and everybody would flip out. <laughs> I used to do that did shit. Did you know he, he was gay back then? Because he didn't come out until later. I don't, I don't think. You don't think he knew? I don't think so. You kind of know when you're. Well, I don't know. When you're coming up, you kind of know. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get me canceled. My name's Clem. And that's between them. <laughs> you know, I love him. I'm, I'm just, a big fan of his to this a day. Very cool dude. Yeah, he's he funny as was, fuck. Um, we we he would go to lunch a lot. He was a huge fan of um, of, of of Broadway soundtracks. When we go to lunch. Oh, well, that wasn't a mm. fucking hint. Not for me, because I was still new, <laughs> man. I, I mean, thought it was cool. This guy likes Broadway soundtracks. I thought it was. A, I thought it was a cool I thing. It was something thing. different. I'm it a was huge something fan I of his. Not, I love him. I had not experienced anything like that before. I was like driving in a car with a dude that was the star of a show that I was on, and I was like having the time of my life. It was it's crazy. Great. It's not right. like I attributed, you know, things to it or whatever. Right. Yeah, I don't think people were thinking about that. Yeah. <clears throat> so then you um, um, No, that's a question <laughs> No, I mean, I like to read It was a big lines. deal I mean, when he came out I mean, it was a big deal You know I was, I was In the news for him Because once Once that happened Well, he became more famous Not only that <laughs> But like the work that he did He got better And I think it's because He was able to just To be, be comfortable in his own skin yeah. Sure yeah. Look, I came out as a Muslim And um <laughs> I feel really good. Like when I act now, I really get into it. You know, oh my I was claiming I was claiming you know white Christian for a while, you were. I and I was hiding behind this, you know, this mask. Was and that when I, you were driving around with that fucking big old snake around your neck? Your Do you remember my oh, the, my bow yeah. my python? I remember. I know yes. that sounded weird. Do you remember my python? I want to see oh. a fucking picture of that. I have one. So me, it's at my mom's house. He I had a fifteen foot Burmese he python. Get us all at the house in Riverside. And we would all be like drunk and high, and then he would put a rabbit in the cage, and we would just sit and wait for the fucking. I'm good. Snake no thanks. I know. <laughs> I don't know. Thanks. I went through a phase. That was a really <laughs> weird. I, I, thing. I, you know what it was? Uh, it was almost like a godlike, you know, mm-hmm. you know, because you are playing God when you do shit oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And you know, when you're 16, 17, that's your way of kind of looking back on it in retrospect. <clears throat> you know. There wasn't any. I don't know if anything good came out. Of that. <laughs> well, not for the rabbit. Not for the rabbit. Well, it's the circle of life. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. 
<laughs> so let's cruise into the writing. You you oh, you yeah. you don't hang up your guns as an actor, but you're like, you know what? Yeah. Let me transition into writing, which you're great at. We've worked on a couple of things here and there together, um, and you have a great understanding of dialogue and script and story and characters. And then you just decided to write your first script, which you told me you sold, right? To yeah. Us. Yeah. We sold with Columbia. Right. It was, it was, it was, um, well, I, again, I attribute that to Stephen. Because Stephen actually brought me into the writing process while I was still working on Doogie. Because I did Doogie with him. I did he would, Murder you would, One. You would go in the writer's room? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he made me a part of it. That's so interesting. That a lot of actors don't get called into the writer's yeah. room. Yeah, well, see, again, that's what I'm saying. Like, Stephen Bochco was such an inspiration, a huge father figure for me. And so he would, he would let me in the writer's room. And then he would let me in the editing bay so I could see like how things were like mm. cut together. He let me shadow uh, directors for wow. NYPD Blue and you know, all of this stuff. And I think maybe in retrospect, he probably was like, you know, he saw maybe something there to do that. I didn't see it. I was still blinded because, you know, I was going to be Mr. Actor Guy. Um, well, you were, nine, what, 19 at the time? 20? Yeah. 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 <coughs> so I did three shows with Stephen and then... Um, when I got to this point, uh, I decided I was just going to write a screenplay. And my, th my thought process was the thing that was holding me up, I, I, in my head, I thought it was myself. So I was like, I'll just write a script that I'm not in, mm. and then it'll sell. And I guess that belief <laughs> made it happen because I sold the first script that I wrote. Damn. Um, and I was like, it's going to work because I'm not in it. If I was in it, that would be the holdup of it. Right. So taking myself out of the equation, it set up, and Columbia bought it, and it was. Uh, did they ever make it into a movie? No, nah, never. It never. Uh, it almost <coughs> did. The director got in, interested, but then, as we started the rewriting process, you know, we were new writers, um, and we did our polishes, and then they got really excited about it, and then they wanted to bring in a more established writer to like you know take it over the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got let go which is actually a good thing because then it was like oh my god you got it's it going next point. level yeah yeah but the new writer <laughs> because of the wga regulations you have to write 51 percent different stuff in order to get full credit that's mm -hmm. weird thing. so she changed <coughs> a bunch of stuff try to write all your stuff out and then the studio was like where's all the cool scenes yeah where's, mm -hmm. where's the movie and so then the, the whole bar. thing kind of that apart. sucks but but you sold a script you sold it and yeah. that happens a lot in Hollywood studios have enough disposable money to say hey we're gonna allocate you know 10 million dollars a year to just buy just scripts and yeah. some of them might go some of them I mean I don't know how not. I mean that was the spec market back in the day the, the spec market was hot I don't know how hot it is anymore mm -hmm. how know, did you like pre-marvel How'd you learn the format for the script to I'd write? Reading scripts all my life. Just reading scripts? I mean, I just had them, and then, like, it was just literally, like, asking a writer, like, what do you do? And they were like, oh, you just get Final Draft. Mm. And then I was like, oh, okay, so you get the software, you put it on the computer. Or the I mean, I had that advantage just because I had been reading scripts since I was 17. Like, yeah. So I knew what they were supposed to look like, and because of Steven and being in the writer's room, I knew, you know, Building characters and advancing plot, and you know, just all that stuff. That, that seems <coughs> like the hardest part is to build the characters in the, the script. It's you, sometimes you just kind of get hit with an idea, and then sometimes you just take something. I called myself the Diddy of screenwriting because I, <laughs> I, was, I was just taking 80s hits and like changing them. So, like, the first script was basically just like Fatal Attraction, but I put it in college. How many scripts have you written? Hmm. Total, including the one that you wrote with me, the Google Me, not Google Me. What was it called? Yeah, Google oh, Me. Oh, the one, the 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 TV show. Yeah, <laughs> remember the pilot you wrote? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun. He wrote a pilot that I came up with for an idea for his TV show, and he wrote it in like thirty six hours. Yeah, something yeah. like that, like fast. Well, because once you get an idea of what it is that you're looking for, for me anyway, it just sort of. Yeah. In. Well, we also kind of have shared like yeah. visuals and I know and your stuff. voice. I know what yeah. you're trying to do, what you're trying to say. I know the relationships it's based on. That right. Kind of thing. We were. It was two. There was there were two. There was one that was set in Malaysia, and then there was another one. Um, what was the other one? The other one was about unsupported. Oh shit! I forgot about that. Yeah. 
You, you know why I forgot about that. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm not elaborating. I'm, I won't go any further. I, I had a very bad relationship with the girl, and Marcus and I wrote a script about it. Mm. Well, he wrote it, but I, you yeah. know. Where's it at now? Sitting on the somewhere shelf, computer, collecting somewhere. dust somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go back and uh, revamp that. Now that everything's yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. I like I the name. I like the name. Unsupported. Unsupported. It was pretty cool. Probably to answer. I think I've heard a little bit of it. A hundred. You've written a hundred scripts. Over. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so we're right now. If you, if maybe, if, I don't know if it's okay to disclose this. <laughs> you're writing a graphic novel. No. Oh, it's not a graphic novel. It's just a novel. Just a novel. Yeah. But it's like in the so 350, 400 page yeah, it's realm. Yeah, 359 pages. It's my my first serious <coughs> novel. I wrote a novel before, but it wasn't serious. But this is a serious. novel. Mm. This is actually making the rounds within the publishing world and stuff. So, awesome. with your uh, screenplays, what genres do you, or you just whatever ideas Everything. you have? Everything. Like I literally have a catalog that's like every genre, like horror movies. Everything. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. I, I can't think of a genre that I haven't written in. I've done the romantic comedy. I've done the sci-fi. I've done the horror. I've done the action. Can I've you lower comedy. your voice a little bit more? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that no? Because you talk like no. Really I think they adjusted. They, we were I, I'm sorry. Is that I'm, Justin? Is that why? Is that why the mic's like all the way down my throat? Because I have a. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you could put I'm it sorry. right into your esophagus, <laughs> can we just I'm implement? Trying to, I'm trying. Implant to, I'm trying to be an adult. I'm trying to, you know. No, no, I'm just joking. But um, uh, have you done anything? I know you said sci-fi. Have you ever done anything like, you know, action hero related? No. That's the only thing I haven't done in terms of that. Like, uh, I've done action stuff and action comedy, but I haven't done, like, a hero. It's maybe the book, kind of, sort of. The book might fall into that category. Nice. But the book is, it's it's definitely, it's, it's a historical horror that um, has a supernatural spin on, a very dark period in American history. Oh wow, yeah. I like that. So it's movie. You see it in, as a movie. The people that have read it do. <laughs> the people okay. that have read it see it as like a movie or 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 a television series. But it's um, That's it's exciting. essentially uh, it's set in 1710 in what is now South Carolina, and it is about a slave who is desperate for freedom as almost all were, um, who, through a set of unbelievable circumstances, becomes a vampire creature. Oh, I already love it. And so he builds a supernatural army to take back the plantation and to free his people. It's like Django meets fucking World War Z. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <coughs> um, all right, so that's what you're. I, I know that th you're that you're knee deep into that, right? Yes. Well, it's the first book is a standalone book, mm -hmm. um, but it is the first of a planned series of six. Oh, sweet. Oh, wow. So, because you know, for me, I've always thought, you know, I've always loved the vampire genre, but I've never understood the hiding from humans. Mm. You know, like if we all go to a barbecue, right? and there's meat on the grill, we don't hide from the grill because we're going to eat from the grill. I think they don't want to be hunted by Wesley Snipe. Yeah, but, <laughs> I mean... What's your favorite vampire movie? Oh, God, there's so many. Honestly, and this will sound weird based on what I write, but it's probably Lost Boys. I love that movie. It's genius. Kiefer Sutherland, it's Corey, was it Corey Haim? Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. That's you right. You get both of them for the price of one. All those stars, yeah. And it's like the quintessential 80s movie. It's the perfect 80s movie. Like, you couldn't put that movie in any other year than 1987. 80s killed it with movies. 80s, they, I thought the 80s the best, was the best yeah. in movies and music. They put so with, much effort into everything. With the exception <laughs> of most uh, Asian characters, the Asian characters in 80s movies. Yeah, very stereotypical. Yeah. Oh, like uh, Data? Indiana kinda, Jones. Yeah, they were kind of screwed. And like all Goonies, the John Hughes movies. Yeah. Goonies, right. You know, that was 
unsavory. But they but made a comeback. Still. Crazy Rich Asians, you know, the yeah, Shanghai so movie. Great. Yeah, Asians are blowing up right I'm now. I'm a huge fan of, like, Asian entertainment. Yes. <coughs> K-dramas, yes. Singaporean shows. Have you seen uh, The Man From Nowhere? No, I have not. <sighs> Watch what that. What is that? Is it, it a K? K yeah. drama? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Well, it's a yeah, it's definitely a drama. It's okay. A, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm very a K-pop. Dude, the knows? writing. Oh my god. <laughs> Watch is, that movie. They're not, they're they've been disbanded now for a minute, but for a minute it's got great music. They got oh, disbanded. Yeah. Oh really? Why? Sometimes the contracts just end. Right. Like they like sign them for like seven years, and then um, you know they just the contracts end, and then they don't sign up again, and it's like kind of a rev- revolving door mm-hmm. in K-pop. So. Like in Sync, like in Sync and Backstreet Boys yeah. and that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually they they they'll disband and then the members will end up going into acting and then they'll be in. Have you Asia. traveled to Asia ever? No, I haven't. Oh, you'd love Asia, man. I told you I lived there for two years. Yeah, yeah. You said you weren't coming back. You know what? He I, said he's leaving. Every I wanted time to I give. <laughs> he's going back. <laughs> I'll go back. I'll go back. Um, I thought I was gonna. I had a five year plan. Right. And it lasted two. <laughs> um, uh, but I'll go back at some point. But yeah, you'd love the food, the culture, the yeah. beaches, no, the, I, the city. There's a big city life there. I really want to go to Singapore because I'm just an enormous fan of Singaporean television. You'd Singaporean like Singapore. Stars. It's it's like squeaky fucking clean over there. Yeah, that's why it came. Like you don't see gum, trash. Right? Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's a true thing. You can't no. spit it out. They cut your, they <laughs> cut your fucking out. tongue off. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you get caught with drugs, the sentence is um, death. Wow. <clears throat> because the first time I flew to Singapore, um, the we were we were about to land, and the the you know flight attendant got on the microphone or whatever intercom. She's like, "Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for flying. You know, so and so airline, Malaysia Airlines." We're, we'll be descending into Singapore shortly. Please put up your trade tables and seat backs. Singapore is a beautiful country. Please go see all the sites and uh, things to, to do. And just for the record, if you are caught with uh, any illegal Did drugs. Did you work for this fucking airline? <laughs> the fuck? If you're, if you're caught with any. If you're, hey, don't ruin my bit. Fuck, did I just get heckled? Jesus, fuck. Oh, it's a bit. Okay. He goes, no, it's not a bit. It's a real thing, but you <laughs> fucked it up. Flow. It was a flow. You're, yeah, you're it was fucking flow. my. It's called Ebb and Flow. That was an ad. Right. Yes. She goes, if you if you are caught with any illegal drugs on your person, the sentence is death. Enjoy your stay. Damn. Damn. It was that matter of fact. And I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I think the first time I heard about Singapore, they were talking about people getting caned, right? Was that, was that in Singapore? I think no, that was the caning. But Singapore is yeah. weird, too, because they have a whole prostitution. Like, it's it's prostitution is legal. Straight up, in oh, your face, you okay. can... <clears throat> you can, you know, go Oldest to this profession, house. but you can't have marijuana. Right. Um, and what was the other thing? Yeah, like any illegal drugs, basically. But I thought, I don't know. I feel like all those countries, Asia, the Middle East, they're a little, they're just a little bit hypo- hypocritical in a lot of ways because they're like, you know, like in Malaysia, they're like, no marijuana. You know, you'll go to jail for ten years, but you can fuck your twelve-year-old cousin. Like that's okay. No, I swear to God. I mean, I'm not uh, making this shit up. That that that, <coughs> that feels weird now. What? Uh, <laughs> hey, Justin, how are we? How are we? How are we on time? <laughs> Forty three minutes. All right. Uh, Let's yeah. talk about what's next for you, really quick, and then wrap it up with your best Hollywood tale. Um, next is just working on these books. I'm making the the transition into um, being a novelist. It's, I just really enjoy the process. I love it. Um, so I, I mean, you know, it's, I still have all these scripts. It's, you know, if anyone's interested in them or, you know, I still have that stuff. I don't mind, um, you know, pursuing it if an opportunity presents itself. But I'm sure I'll be turning a lot of them into novels. Nice. Just I love it. I love the great. process. Yeah. It's, it's it, is acting cool. in your cards anytime down the road or in the future? You know, if if the opportunity presents itself, it's something I've always loved. Yeah. Um, Would you I'm write not, something for yourself ever? I have. I have, but I think you know it's the, it's a different world now, so you kind of have to have a little bit of some juice from somewhere else, Bec- especially because I don't I don't really have any interest in like going through the whole auditioning process anymore. Yeah, I can't fucking stand it. I can't. I I just don't. I just don't have the. I would rather just be working on my books. Yeah, you know I feel I mean? you. Um, yeah. But you know, if 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 it becomes a situation where I'm like you know, 
this author that's like well known and then people go hey weren't you an actor before and then I'm like I, I, sure absolutely I would do it but I, but my, my focus is going to be yeah be tell Joe to shut books. up man <laughs> <laughs> hey shut up Joe I feel like there's been a lot of interruption there there was just a lot of traffic there's, there's and dogs barking happen. are there's you okay dude are you are you all right yeah I'm gonna when when we when we wrap up I'm gonna take a break and just make a quick phone call but I'm okay. all right so tell us tell us your best. Um, Hollywood tell and then we'll we'll be out. All right. Uh I don't know if this is the best or not, but it's something that has always been funny to me. I don't know if it'll be fun, <laughs> funny to anybody else, but we were hanging out with Vince. Uh so I was like there. Vince Vaughn. Let's just go ahead and drop that oh, name. Sorry. Yeah. Vince, <laughs> Vince I'll pick it up. Let's Vince drop it one more time. You want to throw some credits in <laughs> Swingers, Wedding Crashers, yeah, um, that guy. Old school. Right? The tall dude. So uh so he was my first friend in LA and living there with him um, going back and forth actually this is before we were living together so we'd go back and forth and hang out and so I was supposed to meet him at the the condo um, so I meet him there he's not home he comes driving up in that beat up Beretta he used to have and he like rolls the window down he yells at me he's like get in the car get in the car just heard the greatest song ever (laughs) I'm like okay so I get in the car he's like dude I just heard the greatest song ever. I was like, what's the song? He's like, it's a Prince song. I was like, okay, cool, Prince. He's like, yeah, it's like, eh, eh, eh. Oh, I got a live one. Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. Vicky, 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 Vicky. I'm like, this sounds like nothing Vince. That <laughs> Prince would never do anything that sounds this horrible. I don't believe you. So he's like, we're going to drive around. This is back in the days. This is before, like, you know, Spotify and all that. And you had depended on radio for your music. So he's like, we're going to drive. It just ended. We're going to drive around until they play it again. So we literally drove around Los Angeles an entire day and had this like really cool adventure and met up with people and like went to Pink's and stood by the car with the radio playing just to make sure we wouldn't miss the song. Oh my God. It never came on. But like this is the kind of thing you could do in the 90s. Right. It was like a whole day of like going around the town and like Tell everybody what Pink's is. So Pink's is this iconic hot dog stand that always has a line around the corner always it's everybody comes it's like a it's like a tourist attraction even it's like a huge thing and we used to live like right by it lived like two blocks away from it right so we would always go to pinks every day so we went to pinks and i had to stand by the car listening to the radio while he ordered the dogs (laughs) and then he comes in so we're eating the dogs we're listening to the thing so i was it's that no no that's not it that's not it that's not it i'm telling you it's gonna be it's gonna blow your mind it's gonna blow your mind and we drove around till it was dark, waiting for this song to come on. And I was like, Vince, I just, I don't, A, believe you, and B, think that this is going to happen. So, so he drives back. He's all depressed because he was so <laughs> jazzed up about this song. All day. He's like, like depressed, right? So we get right up to the driveway of his condo building, and the song comes on. And he loses it. You know, and he's like, ah, baby, <laughs> this is baby. Come on now. So now we're driving to hear the song. And he was right. It was a great song. It was Bat Dance. <laughs> it, it, it was Bat Dance. And, and, and Vince was, has, awesome. Vince definitely has uh, commitment. Yes. He'll see something through until the end of time to make sure that he listens to the song or gets the deal done or. Yep makes the thing happen, whatever yeah. it is, he always sees shit through. That's a funny story. Yep. Um, well, thanks, dude. Thanks for having me. You want to you want to come back and sure. do it again or maybe sit in on the other ones that we're about to there's, there's, fire off? There's more whiskey, right? Yeah, hang out. Okay. Marcus is going to come back and join us for, <clears throat> uh, I think, our next podcast with Joe. He's just going to kind of sit in on it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, I don't know what episode number this is. Anything you want to plug, talk about? You forgot all you do. We haven't. I haven't seen Blake in a couple uh, in a few weeks, so we need. We have a lot to catch up on. But yeah. we are. It's. Too, you're not going to see this by the time this airs. But we are at the Chicago Comedy Bar this weekend, Friday, Saturday, four shows. Up and coming shows, uh, Ontario Improv, August 10th. You can just go to improv.com. Ontario Improv, August 10th. We have Dallas Fort Worth, September. September 30. And October 1st. That's right. September 30th, October 1st, Dallas Fort Worth Hyenas Comedy Club and the Seattle Comedy Club. September. 
September it's nine ten, bef- I think. It's two weeks before. Two weeks before. Anyway, go to my Instagram at Ahmed Ahmed Comedy A H M E D twice Comedy for all my postings and stories. And you are at at Blake Barty Comedy. What? You Instagram? Plug your Instagram. Oh yeah, sorry. It's just my name. It's just Marcus Redmond. M A R K U S R E D M O N D. I I try to be interesting. Hell yeah. Sweet. And last but not least, uh, the Axis of Evil Comedy Tour is doing our 15-year reunion, uh, May 13th, Friday, May 13th, at Sea Legs in Huntington Beach. Just go to Eventbrite and type in Axis of Evil. It's myself, Miles Jobrani, Aaron Cater, uh, Crystal Marie Denha, and hosted by the one and only Omid Singh. We are potentially shooting this as a special, so tickets are already selling fast. Hope to see you out there. It's in Huntington Beach right on the sand, facing the ocean. It's a cool place. And um, get your tickets. Access of Evil 15-year reunion show. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm excited. All right, guys. Uh, welcome uh, to our fucking cool studio. And we're out. Jam in the van. <laughs>